What is up? What is up? What is up, YouTube? It is your boy Diamonds here at Common Sense Graphics. Today in this video, I'm doing a video request for one of my subscribers named the Second C2. This guy asked me, um, "How do I shade in my images? What is my process?" And so I'm gonna go over that in this video. So this is an image of yours truly, myself, that I took of myself a while ago, and I'm just using my mouse and pen tool to just figure out how I want to outline my character. And using the pen tool and your mouse is a very strong tool to use versus using your stylus if you have a drawing tablet. Um, it's really nice to get really cool, crisp lines and things like that, really nice cuts in here and there. And so using your pen tool can definitely aid you in your work process like I'm using it here. It takes no time at all to learn and it's very simple. The easiest way to learn is playing the Brazier game. Um, so during this process, I'm just uh, plugging and playing with the anchor points, figuring out where the dark spots are on my face. And as I'm figuring it out, I'm able to just mess around with it a little bit here and there just to figure what looks right and what doesn't look right. And since I'm using Adobe Illustrator, it's very easy to adjust and change anything that you think you might have messed up on later on in your image. And so that is what I'm doing here as I'm just plugging and playing. But as we get to the shading aspect of the video, you really want to look at where the light source is in your video. And depending what kind of image if you're doing, like for instance in this video, I'm making more of a minimalist style, logo style picture of myself. And so it really depends on what type of image you're doing. If you're going to do a more higher detail in an Illustrator, then you're going to do a lot more work. But when you're doing something as simple as what I'm doing, you could just make it as minimalist as possible and maybe use two or three different shades of colors. You know, you can use your base skin color, then your single light color that you can go on from there. And realistically, just look at the image that you're drawing on and figure out where the darks are at on the image. For example, like right here on my mouse under my nose and stuff, you can see where there's some shade at and stuff. So I'm throwing the darkest shade right now under my nose area. And then eventually I'm going to go onto the eyes and I'm going to go onto the under the chin part where the shades are dark, but they're not that dark. And you can figure out your color balance from there, depending how dark you want to make your skin color look and play a lot with the colors because finding that proper skin color can be rather difficult depending what type of tablet you're using. Maybe the colors might not pop out properly or if you're just using your desktop. Um, your desktop monitor then you could just feng shui it through your own means necessary through that and again I say this in pretty much every single video where I'm commentating on um, just have fun with it take your time it's way too easy to become sloppy in your work and you just really want to take your time with it and work it out if you rush things through then you're gonna have work that's produced looking rushed and that's not what you're gonna be wanting now as we're on to the coloring process, I have my color palettes all set up and stuff. I'm going to start by outlining the entire face and the color I think is going to fit my face properly. And if you're using the pen tool, all you got to do is hit shift X and it'll make the central area of the image clear as you see there and I can see what's underneath and then I can go on to the second shade of skin and I'm able to just outline where I want the colors to be at. And you have to look at where I'm doing underneath my chin where it's a little bit dark right there. And so you got to make it a bigger area under my lip as well too. And you just gotta make it like a bigger area and do parts that you think where the shades are at. Like a gray. And then right here, I'm going and doing the second layer of darkness. As you can see, it just shows a uh, better emphasis when you use more than just one layer of shade shading. And then I'm gonna go towards the ears and do the exact same process. Uh, don't forget to hit Shift X so you can see what's going on underneath. And you just keep on doing that process and you get to look at the light sources on the image just to make sure that you're not overdoing it. As you can see here, I'm just adding just a little bit of light here and there because this was actually a very nice photo of myself I took. It was very bright and it was very clear and it worked out very nicely. And so this all applies to what you're trying to do when you're trying to make something. And like I said, again, look at the shades. Like on my nose right here, um, it's a very dark area underneath my nose and so you want to make sure that the emphasis of shading is right there and very apparent and I did a really cool little trick here on the hair the hair effect what I did when it comes to the part where the fade is at it's not an easy thing to do at first but once you get it down it's very simple I might go over that in a different video because it's a little complicated so if you guys want to know about that in the future please let me know and I'll make a video about that it's super easy just a little bit of time to explain it I can make a whole entire video of it myself but um like I said again, just plug and play and figure out where those shades are at and 
depending on what kind of image you're doing like I said earlier you can either make it super complex and super amazing or you can just make it basic like this one this one's gonna be pretty darn basic and so I'm not gonna go way overboard but that's pretty much it in this video um, I hope you guys enjoy what I have going here for you guys I uh, hope the second C2 this is adequate for explanation it's very difficult uh, talking directly to you if you're watching yeah it can be difficult depending if you don't know how to work a light source so usually what I do is I'll, I'll put like a circle a yellow circle somewhere in the corner of the, the box I'm drawing in the artboard and then I'll use that as my light source and that will be my identifier to remind myself where my light source is at so I don't get confused and that's pretty much it for this video I don't know what else to say about it I can I can't really say anything else about it because there's so much complication when it comes to making something like this that can talk and just ramble on forever, but I'm not going to waste your guys' time like that. But this is your boy Domins here at Common Sense Graphics. Thanks for watching. Hit that bell button, like, subscribe, and comment, all that bullshit. Your boy out.